Welcome to the Elevate the Vibe podcast, bringing you juicy convos with thought leaders discussing the wild world of parenting. The first mommy and me yoga class that I went to, he was hungry. And so, you know, I nursed and I hung out and I was breathing and I had the best time. But at the end of the class, the teacher said to me, I'm so sorry your baby wouldn't let you practice. And you could hear the like cartoon breaks. <laughs> like, what? Please don't ever speak for my baby, <laughs> you know? What I found over the years of teaching more than anything is that the need for connection with community of mothers and fathers and families is so great. And that's how we succeed. Happy Wednesday, Vibe Hivers. It is your favorite host of the Elevate the Vibe podcast, Jason Berlin. With me also is Katie Berlin. But you know what? Before we introduce my beautiful bride of 10 years, Katie Berlin, it is Wednesday. It's a new episode today. You've been waiting all week and it's here. It's Wednesday. Welcome to the Elevate the Vibe podcast. Shug, take it away. Dang, that was an intro, babe. All right. Well, on this week's episode, we have a very special guest. She was recommended from our guest who was on episode number four, Sabrina Mata, who is a big fan of this week's guest, Desi Bartlett. Desi is a yoga instructor who has been teaching health and wellness for over 25 years with a bachelor's degree in kinesiology, a master's in corporate fitness, And recently, Desi was accepted into a doctoral program for kinesiology. She also holds certifications in yoga, personal training, pre and postnatal fitness, group fitness, and she has helped countless students find their inner joy. She's a global ambassador for Manduka Yoga. She has partnered with them to design a custom yoga mat, which is pretty cool, and is the author of Your Strong Sexy Pregnancy, with another book on the way. Vibe Hive, let's welcome Desi to the show. So Desi, welcome to the Elevate the Vibe podcast. Can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here with you both. My name is Desi Bartlett. I'm originally from Chicago and I have my master's degree in corporate fitness and all kinds of certifications. And basically, I'm just a big old fitness and yoga nerd and (laughs) never want to stop learning. I I continue to enjoy that. I've been writing my second book. And um, now I live here in Hawaii and I wanted to share some aloha with you. Well, aloha. (laughs) Aloha, yes. Very awesome. We're taking it all in. We're loving it. So I was introduced to you through a friend of mine, Sabrina Mata. She was on episode four of our podcast. If anybody wants to listen to that episode, Sabrina was expecting when she was here recording with us and she had shared with us about your book, Your Strong Sexy Pregnancy. And oh, we have a visual. Yay. Yes. Your Strong (laughs) Sexy Pregnancy. So as Desi, as you mentioned, you have this background with extensive accreditation in not only, I think you had undergrad in kinesiology, correct? And then your, your grad was corporate fitness. You wrote this book on your strong, sexy pregnancy, and I'd love to learn a little bit more about the catalyst of what brought you to prenatal yoga and writing your book. Yeah. Um, So I've been in yoga and fitness forever and ever and ever. Um, And I I did not want to work with pregnant women until I experienced pregnancy in my own body. That just felt like um, what was right for me. And so when I was pregnant with my older son, um, he'll be 13 in September. His name is Cruz. When I was pregnant with Cruzy, I would go to prenatal classes and I, I felt like Goldilocks. I couldn't find the right fit. You know, this one was too easy. This one was too hard. This one, they didn't even say the word baby. I'm like, no, I can do better than this. And um, because of that extensive background, I knew that I had the toolbox that I could draw from. So during my first pregnancy, I um, did a DVD called Prenatal Yoga, and we did it in English, Spanish, and Spanglish, which was kind of fun. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And from there, I just, I ran with it, and I went on to get certifications in prenatal yoga and prenatal fitness and all kinds of wonderful things. 
Um, and I, I get a little bit myopic. <laughs> I'm like, this is what I want to do. Um, I also found that there was a niche and um, a need in the market. And when I was first living in Los Angeles, you know, you could spit in the wind and you could hit a yoga teacher. There's so many yoga teachers. Um, but I saw that this was an underserved community. And so I wanted to step into that role. And then after um, Cruzy was born, sort of the same thing happened with mommy and me classes. The first mommy and me yoga class that I went to, he was hungry. And so, you know, I nursed and I hung out and I was breathing and I had the best time. But at the end of the class, the teacher said to me, I'm so sorry, your baby wouldn't let you practice. And you could hear the like cartoon breaks. <laughs> like what? I, I personally had a wonderful time, you know, breathing and being surrounded by community. And please don't ever speak for my baby, <laughs> you know? Um, so I realized that I could, again, create something that, that could fill a need. And um, what I found over the years of teaching more than anything with mommy and me especially, is that the need for connection with community of mothers and fathers and families is so great. And that's how we succeed. We just had a guest on who had created a company and a process. It's called Sir Thriving Mama. And it's basically to help moms after they've given birth, get back to feeling more like themselves. And part of it is that you do feel so alone and hearing you say that you were a part of this community and feeling that need where like this served me, this was great. But then from the teacher's point of view saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry you didn't get the full experience out of it. When in reality, you were like, this was exactly what I needed. It was that connection that was so important in the current environment that we're in now in 2021 post COVID or, you know, in the midst of it heading, hopefully post COVID. I'd love to hear some of how this framework and what you've created and what you've been able to build has helped serve clients or just community in this time where people maybe cannot get together. Yeah. Um, so many uh, different ideas are percolating in response to that question. And um, I created a round yoga mat with a company named Manduka, which is how I, how I know Sabrina. She's lovely. Um, she modeled on the mat when she was pregnant, which was extra special. I didn't know she was pregnant at the time. Um, and so the round yoga mat was created to have freedom of movement in every direction, but it's pretty big. And um, it was really important to me that it was made from eco-friendly materials. And so what I've seen during COVID and the shutdown is that people had the space, the time, and the need for these practices. And so um, whether it was my book or my videos, I'm on Beachbody on demand. I created a YouTube channel during the shutdowns. Um, so many different offerings that I had that came from my heart that could work together synergistically. Additionally, um, because I lived in Los Angeles for so many years, I continued to work with, pre I call them pregnant goddesses, <laughs> with pregnant goddesses um, via Zoom, which was also amazing because, you know, that community especially had to be so incredibly careful about exposure. So to be able to touch them with my voice was amazing. And, and then also, again, because I was in LA for so long, I, I work with a lot of celebrities. And so I had the ability to continue that work here in Hawaii, which I didn't know was going to happen. So um, it, it's all been a gift in the sense that, you know, I, I hope that I'm giving from my heart all that I, I have to share, but then also receiving like a sense of, wow, I, I, I feel like I'm helping. I wanted to touch on some of the celebs that you've worked with and not that we need to say all of their names. You know, of course, there could be confidentiality there. But you've worked with quite a list for a pretty decent amount of time. And mm -hmm. I was so curious with the clients that you've had, what have you found that some of the celeb clients, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure for them. Like after they've given birth, they feel maybe insane pressure more so than some of us uh, non-celebs that aren't going to be photographed by paparazzi if we walk out our door. What are some of the different like, tricks or ways that you worked with them to help them navigate pregnancy and then postpartum? Yeah. Um, 
so I'm not your, let's get you back into your skinny jeans trainer. I'm just, I'm not. Um, but what I am is let's keep you strong and healthy throughout the pregnancy, including your core muscles so that you're set up for success so that you feel so fantastic. It just happens naturally that your body finds its new shape in a really healthy and easy way. And um, so what I sort of became known for is, you know, training your core safely. And, and what does that look like? And primarily it's through stabilization and it's all those exercises that you learn in PT. Like um, it's got such a silly name, I'm sorry. Pointer dog with one arm forward and the other leg back. And um, that kind of stuff can really, really keep you strong. In addition to how you look, it's also how you feel, you know? And so those muscles are going to support the weight of the baby. And so what I really learned is that it's not just your abs, right? It's, it's the entire inner unit. So um, I'm grabbing a cylinder. Here's my sparkling water. <laughs> um, <laughs> at the top, you've got the diaphragm that moves up and down. At the bottom, you have the pelvic floor. In the front, you have the transverse abdominis, and in the back, you have um, multifidi. And so this all works together in harmony. And so again, I'm the fitness and yoga nerd that wants to share that with you, whether you're a celeb or an attorney or a stay-at-home mom or whomever, we can all benefit from that information. We had a pelvic floor physical therapist on our show. She was on episode number five. And after I gave birth to my first child, I did go to see her and we talked a lot about the pelvic floor. We talked about it extensively. I saw her for months to rehabilitate my pelvic floor. Now, there can be a lot of stigma around talking about pelvic floor. People just aren't even familiar with it. They don't really know what it does. They don't know how to find it. They're unsure if their Kegels that they're doing are, are working it properly. So if you're just like a regular, non-expecting person, what are some tips? Like if you're a female that you can find your pelvic floor and if you're a male, you can find your pelvic floor. And um, you can do it the same way for men and women. Next time you use the restroom, when you go pee, stop going pee for two or three seconds. Then you know that you engage the, they're called the PC muscles, the pubic coccygeal muscles, um, and then obviously continue. But the ability to, to find it is exactly what you're saying. It's a little mysterious. People are like, oh, what? I have a pelvic floor, you know, <laughs> what is that? Um, but that, that's the easiest way that I can explain it. I am not um, 100% on board with the like, let's do a million Kegels. There are many different ways to work your pelvic floor and we wanna work it through a full range of motion. And in the same way that I'm, you know, really encouraging people to work through 360 degrees range of motion on the round mat, I wanna see that the pelvic floor can move front to back, side to side, up and down, not just Kegel, you know? Exactly. And that's the pelvic floor physical therapist that we worked with. She even said like, you, if you do Kegels, you could be doing more harm to your body than good. You may not even realize that your, your pelvic floor could be really tense and tight. And if you're doing Kegels, you're just continuing to exacerbate that versus mm -hmm potentially strengthening other parts of your body. Like you were discussing, if you view your entire core as a cylinder and the ways that you breathe or strengthen different muscle groups, that all does affect the health of your body in general and uh -huh. specifically pelvic floor. A hundred percent. Um, so my very, very first job 10 million years ago, I was a weight loss counselor at Jenny Craig in Chicago in the nineties. And they used to make us say all these terrible words um, like gas and diarrhea. And I'm sorry to say this, but they, they wanted us to be comfortable saying things that um, people might be too embarrassed to say. And looking back, it was great training because now I can say, you know, did you pee when you sneezed? Are you, are you having bladder leakage? You know, all these different things that people can get a little bit shy about. I'll just jump right in. If someone is currently expecting and they don't necessarily feel comfortable going into a studio or maybe they don't even have studios open where they are, what are a couple different options that you think would be valuable to them if they wanted to like check out more information or 
ways that they could begin to dabble in prenatal yoga if they haven't yet? Yeah. Um, well, it, it kind of depends on what kind of learner you are. You know, if you like a traditional book and turning pages, this is fantastic because it's got um, so many different illustrations and photographs. I'm laughing because um, my son had a card he made for me in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so sweet. Um, but this is a good way to dabble. Additionally, uh, you can go on to Beachbody On Demand, and I've got a bunch of videos on there if you want to see it before you try it. I'm kind of that person. I, I want to look at it first. Um, so whether it's the book or the video, that, that gives you the opportunity to check out what you're going to do before you jump in. And in the book, so for the audience, when Desi is flipping through the pages, there's like specific visuals on, you know, here's how you do this pose. And then within the book, it just kind of allows you to pick and choose what works for you and what feels uh-huh. good for you. I mean, as pregnant women, I, I know, can't relate. I'm yeah. Sorry. You're not, you wouldn't be able to relate, <laughs> <laughs> but like your body is just so wildly attuned when you're expecting. So, you know, exactly like what feels right and what doesn't feel right for you. And then on the flip side of that, after you give birth, everything, it's like you were hit by a train and you're like, nothing feels right. I, I don't even, my old body is, is like a, a lovely forgotten memory. <laughs> like, where is that thing? So if somebody is postpartum right now, what are like simple exercises that you feel, let's say that they didn't have any like serious medical situations that came up during birth. What are a couple simple exercises that someone could do that are yoga related that would help them begin to strengthen their core? So one of the things that I see um, during pregnancy and beyond that uh, we all have to kind of deal with, if you will, are postural changes. So when, when you're pregnant, you know, obviously your abdomen is expanding forward, your breasts grow and everything is pulling forward. And as, let me just stand up, as your belly pulls forward, sometimes the low back kind of goes with it. <laughs> and then um, we get into the situation where it's like sway back and Donald Duck syndrome. So if we can send the tailbone down and engage the core lightly during pregnancy, that's fabulous. Then after the baby's born, we get into what I call baby adoring syndrome or situation, I should say. Um, And so we're always leaning forward. And especially if you haven't learned all the mechanics with feeding and bringing baby to breast or to bottle, um, there's just a lot of tension up here. So I I like to start with simple standing, just stand up and um, put your iPhone or whatever on timer and take a picture of your posture and check it out. You know, are you, are you favoring the one side because you've got baby on the other hip all the time, uh, all the time? Are you um, still slumping forward in the shoulders? Kind of assess, you know, like what, what's going on? So anytime that something is rolling forward, there's weakness on the opposite side. So getting into, um, I'm going to borrow from fitness first, getting into rowing kind of exercises is fantastic. And that could be as easy as going to Target and buying like a $15 band, put it around uh, a pole, a tree, your spouse, (laughs) and (laughs) gently pull. And then in yoga, all of the core work that we do is uh, for postnatal is primarily on the floor. We do a lot of quadruped work. It's just a fancy way of saying hands and knees. You know, so again, getting into that pointer dog kind of stabilization exercise. Uh, I'll warm them up with cat and cow, which I call rainbow and unicorn because I didn't like being called a cow when I was pregnant. Um, So rainbow and unicorn and then pointer dog and then take that out to the side, plank, forearm, plank, all that kind of stuff where you just kind of get down and hold it will stabilize the system. So during pregnancy, everything's expanding and growing and blossoming. And then how I felt after pregnancy, like during pregnancy, I felt like a big juicy plum you know? <laughs> and then afterwards I felt like a prune. Oh my yeah. God. What the yeah. Heck? yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I am a five months postpartum with number two. So yeah, I'm a prune right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so breathing, standing up tall, like a queen, finding the strength in your core, getting down on the floor. You can do it next to your baby and 
just stabilizing that system will give you so much more power in, in your daily mechanics. Part of what you're working on now is your Desi body mind side of the business. Mm -hmm. And you're working on building out this part. Well, I'll let you explain it. You go ahead and, and share with the audience about Desi body mind. So when I started working in pre and postnatal, I, I wanted a name that would kind of catch everyone's attention. And so Mothers Into Living Fit is an acronym, it's MILF. And like that got people's attention real fast, right? <laughs> and it was great. Um, but I also, I want to recognize where I am in my life. My children are 13 and seven. I continue to work with pregnant goddesses. I love them. They'll always have my heart. But like, I also work with guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I also work with people that haven't had babies. So um, it's important to me that I, I have an umbrella for everything that I do that's a little bit more welcoming to everyone. Separately from that, I, I think as a society, especially over the course of the last year, we saw the importance of mental health and how, how much we need to bring that into the conversation. And in yoga, the, the body and the mind are not separate. You know, they're inextricably linked and the word is actually body mind. So I, I started to play around with that and that felt really true. Like this is, this is where I want to go. This is the right path. So we just filmed the new reel for that. The website is under construction. We'll add the new reel. And I wanted to do it as a little bit of a soft launch because I'm really a planner and I like to have, you know, there's three steps until the launch date and this, that, and the other. And honoring all of the change that's happened in the last year, it feels more authentic and good to just kind of take it easy and go with the flow and see where it takes me. I saw your Instagram post where you were announcing the launch of Desi Body Mind and you wrote a little line and I thought it was so powerful and you said, where a thought goes, a molecule flows. And I think that mindset is so important. Like the words that we speak are like a spell out into the world. And before you speak something, you think it. So every time you're thinking or you're speaking, you're putting energy towards a direction that you want to go. And like you said, we know that, especially from the past year, how important it is to take care of your mental health. I'd love for you to talk about aspects of that that you plan to incorporate into Desi Body Mind. Yeah. So um, I think like so many people at the beginning of the shutdowns, I was a little cuckoo. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to teach school from home on Zoom. I don't like, oh, and I, I sat in meditation because I have a regular meditation practice that serves me so well. And I, I realized like, oh, this, this is what I do. I just need to do more and I need it to be um, something that I share with my entire family. So some simple practices that we enjoy together. I've taught my children how to meditate and it's very much quality over quantity, you know, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath and finding that deep sense of center every day, establishing rituals and rituals that allow us to feel the connection of the body and the mind has been so, so powerful for us as a family. And then also a, a lot of what, um, you know, many experts offer things like gratitude lists and sharing that as a family, whether it's a dinner or before bed, that kind of thing. And I realized it's not quite as important what all these little things are as the fact that you have them, that you have tools you know, maybe your tools are different than mine. Maybe you take a daily walk and it's a, it's a moving meditation. Maybe you have a seated practice. Maybe you do it with your kids. Maybe you don't. It's different for everyone, but just finding a rhythm and a ritual in life can be so soothing in a world where you don't know what the heck is coming next. Okay. I know every day at 6 a.m. I'm going to do this. It just, it feels good. The thought of the tools being flexible, but the fact that you have a ritual like is inflexible, basically, I feel like that's really powerful for people because so many of us, it's like, okay, well, every day I used to go, I used to go to the gym every day, or I had to go to my yoga 
class every single day or I had whatever it is. I would go in my favorite green juice place and pick up my green juice every day. And then the past year forced all of us to rethink how we move through life on the daily and not just for us, but like you said, for your family, for your children too, the importance of creating structure and routine. I found like we have a very young child, but or two very young children, but the importance of that also for them, it's like, it doesn't really matter what the tool is, but as long as they have that and you not only were dealing with the craziness of 2020, but your family moved also across the, well, not across the country, but like across the ocean. So (laughs) you had so much. And with that, I would love to know with some of the tools that you implemented or rituals that you implemented, what effect did you see it have on your children as far as like a positive way that they were able to grasp onto something that they felt was theirs? So we knew that we wanted to move to Hawaii. We, we came to Hawaii in February of 2020 to um, basically find a house and to sign contracts for schools. And then we got back to LA and two weeks later, the world stopped. And so people ask all the time, did you move because of COVID? And I'm like, no, no, we moved in spite of COVID. And so there is a lot of stress around, you know, selling a home. Are we going to be able to sell a home in a market where you can't even like go see the home unless it's virtual? How are we going to sell our cars? How are we going to donate stuff when like even Goodwill is shut down? Everything was closed. So what I did with my boys, I would take them to the beach when we were allowed to go to the beach. We were very lucky. We lived in Marina Del Rey across the street from the ocean. And I would just walk them to the shore. And that was where we would meditate and breathe together. And they would hear me, I I know that everyone has their own um, religious and spiritual beliefs, and I don't want to alienate anyone, but I I do believe in prayer. And so I I would ask, you know, please let, let the perfect family find this home and enjoy it. And so the boys heard that and they would join in. Um, And so what I saw when we moved to Hawaii and we would go out to the ocean, again, we're like a block away from the ocean here. Uh, we'd go to the ocean. They said, thank you. Thank you for letting us move here. Thank you for, um, you know, finding the perfect family for that house in LA. So they're my little gurus, you know? I feel like children are the ultimate teachers, but then when you see, like, of course, we'll see something that we do and then our children do it. And we're like, we, wait, don't do that. Don't, mm-hmm. you know, like, <laughs> I don't want you to, to pick up that aspect of me. But then when we do see something positive, it just makes, it's like amazing. Like our little, our three-year-old will walk outside in the evening. We take evening walks with our dog and he'll say, look at the beautiful sunset. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, babe, it is a beautiful sunset, you know? And then he'll come home and take his shoes off and put them right neatly next to ours underneath, like by himself. Uh, I'm like, all right. Yeah, it's (laughs) it's like those small... Just learning the little little fun things. It's those small rituals of gratitude Mm -hmm. that do make a big difference in the day-to-day. And it's like, like you said, no matter what crazy is happening you know, having those options. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what you continue to bring forth for the future on oh, Desi Body thank Mind. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to expand with Desi Body Mind. And then also I have a second book coming out next year um, with my two co-authors. There's a, a Pilates teacher and a fitness trainer, and we've all worked with a lot of different celebrities, Andrea Orbeck and Nicole Stewart. We've even shared a lot. And um, we just saw that, you know, over the course of the last year, I think we all feel like we want to be able to share as many tools with as many people as possible. And like you just said, you know, it kind of doesn't matter what the tool is as long as you have it. On to the next book. I'd love to hear a little bit more. So what can we expect and when may it be available? (laughs) Um, So we're looking at a January 2022 release, and um, you'll see a a lot of similarity to your strong, sexy pregnancy because it's the same publisher. And this publisher, Human Kinetics, they're amazing. 
because they go through all the different exercises and it's in color, which um, for those of you in the publishing world know that can be a little pricey, but they invest in these books because they want it to look and feel beautiful and be a full offering. Um, so you'll see fitness, yoga, and Pilates from three of the most dedicated trainers you'll ever meet. That is very exciting. I love the idea of something that you have pregnancy and then also postpartum as well. And it's like, because the majority of the world, like you said, even if you, if you've had a child, but there's half the world that is male or identifies as male and they want resources too. You know, we don't want to neglect <laughs> our, our better halves yes, over here. <laughs> What is a key takeaway that you would want to leave our audience with? I'd like to leave your audience with the takeaway that movement should be a joy and it it should feel good. And if it doesn't feel good, find something that feels good. You know, if you don't like yoga, it's okay. Try fitness. You don't like fitness. That's okay. Try surfing, you know, whatever. Um, But it's movement is energy in motion. And when we can tap into the joy of movement, we feel more alive, we feel healthier, we feel fully present and awake and aware. And we're not just in here, which is kind of where we've been stuck a little bit with like all the the Zoom classes and meetings and whatnot. And I've seen a lot of people kind of forget like the rest. (laughs) So yeah, Desi was pointing to her her head there saying like, we're basically stuck in our own minds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get into your body, then the clarity of thought is there and um, it just sets you up for success. I know that you have a lot that you offer as far as like YouTube, on your website, in addition to what you offer, if there's any other resources that you would want to recommend for the audience, whether it's a parenting resource or something related to yoga, a way that someone can help better connect their mind and their body, they may feel disconnected. Just any resources that you have for the audience. Yeah, um, two come to mind right away. The first one is my best friend. Her name is Lori Bregman. She's a very well-known doula. She's um, got an amazing Instagram. It's L Breggy. And all of the pictures are so uplifting and raw and real and natural. It's just super inspiring. And she's got a lot of great tips um, pre and postnatal. She also has a book called The Mindful Mom to Be. And um, she has a new doula deck, which is super cool. And then the second thing that comes to mind, um, I have a dear friend in San Diego. Her name is Nataya Gwynn. And she is, she's just cool. (laughs) She's a naturopath. And she does a lot of like workout videos now with her kids. Uh, But what I love about Nataya and what she has to offer is that there's just really simple tools that are present throughout everything that she does that help, that help families to stay present. So like, it's one thing to just talk to the mommies and that's cool and we all need it. But when you, when you can incorporate and involve the whole family, then just, you know, really recognizing that the woman isn't like um, the only person present. Everyone's working together and coming from a loving space. Oh, we should see if we can get her on the show. That would be fun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Well, I would love for you to be able to share where everyone can find you and all of your offerings. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Um, Yeah. So on Instagram, I've got Mothers Into Living Fit, which is all about the moms. I've got Desi Body Mind, which is um, for everyone else as well. (laughs) And then uh, we just switched the website. So I've got Mothers Into Living Fit and DesiBodyMind.com. And I I don't want to confuse people with, you know, the two of everything, but again, for the mommies, I want to love you up and hug you and give you everything that I can. And then for those who are not mommies, I want to do the same exact thing, but with a slightly different approach. Yeah, that is awesome. awesome. I love it. And you have your YouTube channel. Oh, you're so good. Thank you. Yes. Um, YouTube is Desi Bartlett, youtube.com slash Desi Bartlett. I've got your strong, sexy pregnancy is the book. I'm on beach body on demand. You can find me for pre and postnatal yoga. Um, you can also find me throughout YouTube. I've done a ton of content over the years for so many different people. 
Um, they've also uploaded all the DVD content since DVDs are now like, you know, CD-ROM, <laughs> it's kind of gone away, but the content is evergreen, meaning that, you know, prenatal yoga is prenatal yoga. I saw a really cool video of you. Uh, you were working with a gentleman and you were just doing like a seated chair exercise was a group. And I did see that the Duchess of Sussex was part of your audience that was there participating back before, you know, she was in her role now, which was pretty cool. She was a model there. So that was, that was pretty cool yeah. to see too. Yeah, that was the home and family show in Los Angeles. And the gentleman was Mark Steinus. He used to be like the entertainment tonight reporter guy, super nice gentleman. And we were talking about posture, um, but yeah, Megan Markle was in class, which was super fun. Her mom is also a yoga teacher, coincidentally, and she was really, really sweet. And I posted that recently, um, not, not from the standpoint of like, oh, here's a celebrity, but from um, a place of support for her in voicing uh, her truth. Our, our family is mixed race. You know, I'm Mexican and Russian, so I'm mixed race. And then my husband is Caucasian. So it's important to me uh, that, that we're all treated as equals. Yeah. I love that. That's just something that you're thoughtful about and will bring light to as well. That's like a very important, beautiful message to share. Thank you. Yeah. I've had the pleasure of working with moms uh, from around the world. I've worked with a Saudi princess, like for real around the world. And we all have the same, um, we all have the same love in our hearts for our children. So it's beautiful to see. That's the truth. Yep. Well, thank you for joining us to help elevate the vibe. It was amazing to have you because for the audience, we've been working on this for almost like two years, I think, to get mm -hmm. <laughs> like we've been texting back and forth and trying to figure it out. And we got you on. So we're so excited that you mm -hmm. could join us. And thank you for sharing your time with us today. Uh oh, thank you both so much. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you, uh, you know, offering this service and offering information and a sense of community for moms. It's so needed. Thank you, Desi. All right. Thank you. We'll right. be in touch soon. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <Yeah>. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>Hey there, Vibe Hive babes. If this podcast has brought you any value, please rate and review on your favorite listening platform. And if you're feeling really generous, share with a friend. Visit us at elevatethevibe.co for show notes on this episode and previous episodes. This podcast is intended to educate, entertain, and inspire. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, or substitute for professional medical advice please consult your healthcare provider with any questions you may have. And as always, thank you for joining us to Elevate the Vibe.